Okay, guys. So, so today I'm going to show you this awesome uh, library called Number. Uh, Number fixes the problem of having very simple operations in Python take a very long time to do. So, for example, uh, this is a function I wrote as an example. All it does is it iterates over x, y, and z, and then does some uh, conditional check, and then it appends uh, to the list l some value if that conditional check ends up being true. Now, it's going to take me a long time to execute this, so I'm going to really show you uh, like what the problem is here. So if I run this script, you can see that it's taking uh, forever to execute something that should relatively uh, not be so long. Like It should not take Python this long to execute something so simple, but it does. So as we can see here, it took 12 seconds to uh, iterate over uh, these three it took uh, 12 seconds to iterate over these three uh, loops. Now, that's unacceptable, and I think that a lot of people who write Python code also agree with me because uh, there's a library called Numba that really helps you out in these situations. So what Numba does is it takes a function and it uh, compiles that function for you so that when you execute it, it's a lot faster than it would be if it wasn't compiled. Now to show you how that works, I'm just gonna import from, from Numba. I am gonna import ngit. And the ngit is a decorator that you are supposed to stick on top of functions that you want to optimize. So for example, if I want to uh, ngit this f function, all I'm doing is I'm gonna add ngit on top of this function. And when I run this, it is going to be a lot faster than it used to be. So as you can see, uh, even though it's still one second, one second, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than 12 seconds. Like something like this executing in, in one second is much better than a 12 second execution. Uh, but there are there are problems with ng2. So it's not really for free. You do have to keep in mind that you can do a lot of things that you could do in regular functions if you use ng. So one of the limitations is that if you use ng, you are not allowed to use uh, a lot of um, functions that you would otherwise be allowed to use. So for example, if you are using a dependency, if you're using uh, some... Um, if you're using some uh, library that NGIT doesn't really know about, you may have problems if you add functions from that library into this uh, function. Uh, and another thing that you really need to keep in mind when you're looking at uh, when you're looking at optimizing your functions with NGIT is that if you have a low uh, execution, if you don't have a lot of executions in your function, so for example, if I reduce all of my ranges from uh, like Hundred and a thousand to uh, ten, ten, ten. If I execute this, if I execute this, you'll see that it's going to take me uh, uh, 0 0.27 seconds to execute. And you may be asking me, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that if I remove engine up here and I execute the same function. Uh, you'll see that it's going to take me zero seconds. So in this case, Python is actually faster than NGIT is. And the reason for that is because uh, when you uh, when you uh, compile a function, it takes time to compile it. So uh, the first time that function runs, it's going to take it uh, a very long time to compile. Uh, but you can also... Uh, you can also reduce the execution time here by doing this. So if I do ngit, and let's say I don't care about the first time that I run this function. So the first time, I don't care about timing, first time running. Okay, so I don't care about the timing, first time running. So the first time I execute this function, it's going to uh, get compiled and it's going to run. But the second time I execute this, it's already compiled, so it's not going to uh, recompile. So the timing is going to be much faster. So if I run this again, we'll see that the timing is actually, the timing of the function itself is actually pretty quick, but it's pretty quick because the compilation already happened, right? So the time needed to compile this function already happened up here. And because of that, uh, this function down here is a lot faster at executing. Uh, 
Uh, now here's another thing. If you if you are doing a loop and you're executing this function down here in the loop, so let's say for uh, for x in range, uh, and I'm gonna in com uh, I'm gonna execute this. Let's see, uh, one thousand times I would say, or ten thousand times. So I'm gonna execute this ten thousand times, and we'll see that if I run this, uh, we are running this in half a second. Or about half a second, but if I remove that engine and we run this, yeah, it's going to take a long longer. So it, it's it took almost uh, three times longer to execute with without engine than it and then it did with engine. So yeah, it really it's really interesting to uh, try to optimize your Python scripts using engine because engine is one of those things that you don't really need to remember a lot. All you need to do is remember engine. Now you do have other things with uh, with Numba. So, for example, you have uh, you have uh, parallelization. You can do parallelization with Numba, but I don't really want to touch that because uh, the more you get into the weeds with optimization, the more time you're wasting uh, just optimizing your code instead of uh, like getting things done. So, for example, for me. If I can get my script to run in a couple of seconds, that's good enough. I don't need to have a script that runs like sub a second or like sub millisecond. I don't care about that. So if like all I use Numba for is the engine, and I recommend everyone uh, installs Numba and uses engine just just in cases like this where you need to optimize a fairly simple function.